Well, if you haven't had a chance yet to look through that huge notebook called the Collaborative Summer Library Program Manual, you'll be in for a treat. It has so many ideas in there that are so wonderful to use and easy to use. I am going to be presenting decorating your library. I'm going to be adding to those ideas, maybe um, creating some alternative ideas, um, just to add to what's already in the manual. I hope that there will be a seat or two that you can take home with you, something that you will use your own creative juices to make your own in your own setting. We all have different settings um, in our libraries. Some of us are able to do a lot of things and some of us aren't, so just take what you, you have and make it your own. I have uh, divided this into three sections, one for each of the themes that we're having for the children, the teens, and the adults. So we're going to start with the children. My favorite type of decoration in a library is just what I call the evolving decoration. I'm going to show you three different examples. What it is, is using your customers, the children in this case, to help add to the decoration as the summer goes along. It's always changing, it's always current. It grows because of audience participation. And it also helps with buy-in. If, if the children are helping with the decoration, they are feeling like they are a part of what's going on in the library. We don't all have, as I said, ideal spaces. Our walls may not be smooth, or we may have no bulletin boards. But be creative. Um, I was in one library that has stone, li stone walls. We used golf pencils. We stuck them into the spaces. Then we made holes in what we were hanging, and we just hung it that way. Be creative. You can do it. Um, so here are a few ideas for an evolving, developing, growing, ever-changing decoration. The first is a string of stars, and um, I have one over, jo jo Joanne's going to be my Vanna White. Um, a string of stars that you can put up. Um, if you have access to a die cutter, you are very lucky. Take advantage of the wide variety of theme-related dies that, that they have. In preparing for this workshop, I used a puffy star, a nested star, a starburst, mini stars, and a moon. Lots and lots of star options. Cut out lots and lots in either a specific color theme or many, many colors. Um, and I punched holes in mine because I'm going to string them up. Cut out as many stars as you anticipate you're going to have uh, participants and then cut out that many again. And then decide if it's something that you want to do when kids sign up, if it's something you want to do all summer long, or if it's something you just want to do for those who complete and have each child put his or her name onto a star, maybe add a book title, just like you did when you came in to say. Um, and then collect the stars until you have a pile that's gonna make a significant stri string, and then start putting it up. And collect them as the summer goes on. When you have enough to add to it, just keep adding. And then see how far around the library it can get or around your, your children's room if you have one, or around the little space that you're using for your summer reading programs, your performing space, or whatever. And what's really fun is to have the kids guess how far it's gonna go around, or how many or might end up on the string um, by the end of summer. So you might give a little prize for somebody who comes the closest to that guess. So the next idea for Dream Big I have is big ideas using a bulletin board where you put up sleeping or dreaming or thinking animals or people and you have these available for the kids to come in and you ask them to put down what their idea is. What is their big idea? What's the big idea? What is your big dream? Um, one animal or person can have more than one idea and so the, kid, the children can figure out what place they want to put their ideas. It could also be a kind of craft project. You could put magazines out where they could go through them and cut out and glue their uh, what pictures that represent their ideas onto one of these forms. Um, some ideas that they can put in the bubbles would be a uh, dream for the world, what their dream job might be, what their dream pet would be, ways to improve their environment. If I could go anywhere, where would I go? If I could see anything, what would I see? Things like that. Again, it would just evolve over the summer. It would get bigger and better. 
Kids love coming in and finding their names or what they've done on your bulletin board or on the string of stars. It's a lot of fun. It, it involves the community. It gets everybody involved. And then a very, very simple way of having an evolving a decor is a paper chain, which I also have over here. Very simple. You take eight and a half by 11 paper, cut it into strips. You have it available for kids. Uh, one summer I did it where they put every single book that they read, a title on each of the strips, and see how far again, how far it goes around the library. You can make it theme related by putting out stickers that would be theme related, uh, stars or thought bubbles or whatever you can come up with. There's so much to think of this summer. And then again, hang it in the library, watch it grow, guess how far it's going to go around the library. Another thought I had was that maybe we could create a planetarium in our library. Several different ways to do this. Easy is just to purchase glow in the star, glow in the dark stars and put them up either on your ceilings if you can reach them or your walls. Put them in shapes of constellations or just put them up so that they glow. Um, have it in a space that might get dark. I know that it's summertime. It doesn't get dark very early anymore. It won't get dark very early anymore. Um, but there must be some space in your library that, that can darken. You can also have kids make a homemade planetarium out of an oatmeal box. I have one over there and I will light it up um, in a minute or during the break. But you take the, the uh, oatmeal container, you poke holes in the shape of a constellation in the top. There is a little um, light in there, you shine it. And then if you put it up high, like on top of your ta tallest shelves, and shine it onto the ceiling, it will reflect the, um, the constellation that you've poked the holes in. So that one's kind of fun to do. You can make a lot of different ones and put them all up at the same time and create some kind of a night sky. You can do it on the walls as well. It doesn't have to just be on the ceiling. I know if I'm in my library, the ceilings are way too high. If you have some money to spend, you might think of purchasing a portable planetarium. They come in various complexities and costs. Amazon carries them. Toy stores carry the Space Theater Planetarium for about $30. You can get a much more complex version that I saw on Stars So Bright for about $100. Um, they just um, project the constellations, the night sky, up onto a ceiling or a wall. And of course, like I said, the darker you can get your library, the better. And when I think of dreaming and dream big and nighttime, I think of comfy seating and settling down with a cozy blanket and pillows to read a book. So create as many cozy spaces as you can in your library with lots of blankets and pillows. You can have fleece blankets and large soft pillows throughout the children's room. It does involve a little bit of laundering, which is why I would suggest fleece blankets. You can just throw them in the, in the wash and the dryer and they come out all fluffy and soft. Um, same for some pillows. You get a pillowcase that's easy to come off and on. Partnering with a fabric store or a bedding store might be a good idea here, so you're not spending a lot of money, or a fabric store. Um, you can go and, and buy a, in the yardage store some fleece and just cut it up into whatever size little blankets you want and throw them all over the library and make it nice and cozy. One of my favorite things would be to tent the library. You can create dark, cozy spaces this way throughout your area by using tents to define reading areas. And I use the word tents kind of loosely. You can make tents by hanging fabric from a round metal ring and just hanging it down to the floor. Similar to a shower curtain. In fact, if you wanted to use a shower curtain, that would be kind of cool. Then you could see in. <laughs> Important. Um, or you could create a, a teepee-like structure with PVC pipe or a, a square kind of a thing and just drape some fabric over that. Cover tables that you have in your, in your library. Cover a table with a big bedspread or tablecloth that hangs down to the floor so that there's space under there for them to kind of get cozy. You can purchase play tents similar to the one I've set up in the back at Sears, Toys R Us, Amazon for less than $50. You can borrow tents from your customers or your staff and set them up around the library. 
And then, of course, adding the blankets and the pillows and flashlights and reading materials wherever you set them up to give it that cozy feeling. Now, if you're really ambitious, you can tent the whole space. <laughs> I don't know how many of you are of a certain age, but this is what our dorms used to look like. <laughs> you just take blankets and bedspreads, we used madras, and um, hang them from the ceiling. Make sure you're not covering anything flammable. <laughs> Make sure that you're not covering anything you want people to see. You might have to do it in a little corner, but it's kind of a cool feeling. Again, pillows, blankets, make even a cozier space. And always, always remember to feature your collection somewhere near where you have these spaces. Books, videos, audiobooks, um, whatever you can find, magazines, lots of ways to interpret this year's theme, so make sure that you are showing them what you have in your collection. Now for teams. A lot of the ideas that we've talked about to this point will work for other ages. You just have to kind of tweak it for the older audiences. Um, one idea I had was to create a wall, a black wall, somehow, either um, with black um, foam board or using black plastic trash bags. You cut them open, you hang them from a ceiling, and then what you can do if you um, you can either paint on them or what one idea I had was covering the windows and cover them and then poke the holes for the constellations in them and then the constellations will be shining through all the time during the daylight. And you can create, again, get those reference books out, have, have your teens help you. Um, and you can create all sorts, you can create a night sky of what it looks like from your neck of the woods. Another idea is just to make it look like the galaxy has exploded. Put stars, hanging stars, stars uh, in the doorway, stars on the windows, stars on top of the surfaces that you have, um, so that it just looks like everything is stars. You can also add string lights ar around the room, like I've done in here, so give it a little effect of a nighttime feeling. You can also create, I think it's pronounced lumineers. Um, you can't see them from here, but I have three bags over there. They have lights in them. If you can get little electric candles, uh, they flicker. It gives a nice effect. And then you can put these on the path toward your teen collection, on your path to the teen room, on your path to when you're having a teen program, so that you can kind of lead them to where, where they need to be. Also, make everything, I mean everything, glow in the dark. Make the walls black like I was talking about with something black. Um, if your lighting will allow it, put in a black light or buy a portable black light. They're not very expensive. Paint star designs, any kind of thing on the, on the surface with um, glow in the dark paint. You can even paint the teens. They have glow in the dark face makeup, glow in the dark nail polish. Everything glows in the dark. You just have to have a dark space. Another idea would be to create a club atmosphere. Have music and, and dance and entertainment images up all around the room. Hang a disco ball where it will reflect the light. The kids can help you with this. The teens will love putting broken CDs or mirrors onto a styrofoam ball and then hanging it from the ceiling and then the light will reflect. I'm not sure how you'd make it turn around, but, um, but that it's a great idea to try. And then have music playing softly. And then um, consider the night people. There are people who work all night long. Have the teens figure out who they might be. Find images of these people and have them around the room creating a display. I came up just off the top of my head with disc jockeys, night watchmen, street sweepers, etc. Again, your collection. Make sure that you um, make it visible to them. Bring it, especially the books if they're going to be um, creating this constellations or figuring out jobs, things like that. Make sure that those books are available to them to help you create your decorations. And lastly, uh, between the covers, uh, for the adults, 
We use a lot of the same ideas. Tense your space, make it shiny and sparkly, create cozy spaces with your blankets and your pillows, and use the bulletin boards for displaying things. And in this case, you can display uh, book covers. It is between the covers. And just go to your catalog and search for all books that might have some night either in the title or have something to do with the nighttime. And then either copy the book covers, have the adults maybe create their own book covers, use, um, cover the, the walls with it. It actually becomes another evolving um, display as the summer progresses. You can also have librarians and the public suggest titles that would go on there. And they can create book reviews, and you can create a template for the book reviews so that not only the public can do it, but the staff can do it, and do it as in Barnes & Noble, put them out in the collection and uh, let them read them and figure out what's going on. So in closing, I just want uh, to remind you to be your creative selves, ask your volunteers and your customers and your colleagues for ideas. Um, I have samples around the room, so mostly in this area here for during the break, if you want to come look at them. And if you have any questions at all, this is my website, I mean my, my email, um, that you can please contact me with any ideas you have or any questions that you might have. Thank you very much.